Well, Jolien, thank you so much for that very kind introduction. Uh, it is absolutely wonderful to be here today. And can I start with just a huge thank you for giving me a brief reprieve from the circus that is Brexit uh, that rages uh, all around us uh, as, we, as we speak in this room. I feel that I have walked into a room full of optimism. And Jolien, that story uh, about your niece um, is inspiring. I think it is what this industry is all about. And I'm very proud to have spent uh, a lot of my career in it. And I've looked at your agenda today, Claire, David, Jolien. It's absolutely cracking. Uh, and um, in terms of, you know, that world out there and Brexit, we have to be able to have the kind of conversations uh, that you are going to be having today. Uh, so just delighted to be here uh, to, to, to kick you off. Um, I think it was actually the British Nobel Prize winner, Dennis Gable, who got it right. He's actually um, a, a TMT hero uh, who worked on early TV transmission and helped invent the hologram. And he said, we cannot predict the future, but we can invent it. And I really do think we are in an age of invention right now, not just for specific companies or sectors, but for the UK as a whole. I think Brexit has hastened it, but it was coming anyway. Automation, globalization, all of these forces. And we're asking what kind of country we want to be. What are we good at? How can we win globally to create prosperity that is shared really across the whole of the UK and across society? And I think one thing is absolutely clear. And here, I hope I can add to the optimism of your day. I think the UK absolutely should be a world leader in this extraordinary sector that we have of telco media and tech. We are now, uh, but how we continue to be leaders in decades to come. So, you know, here we are in the greatest media and communication city on earth. We consume media by the yard in sound and vision. We argue about it absolutely constantly. But above all, we lead it. Just take our creative industries. They contribute over 100 billion pounds a year to the economy. They employ one out of every 11 people in the UK. One in every eight albums sold in the world is made by a British artist. And in tech, despite Brexit, despite everything, last year venture capital invested in UK tech eclipsed Germany and France combined. And while the black country led the way in the first industrial revolution all those years ago, now it's leading the way in the fourth with world-class 5G research in Birmingham, Woolhampton, and Coventry. And of course, we have our great tradition of public service broadcasting with BBC, ITV, Channel 4, it's hard. And yes, I did, I uh, did give out a great cheer when I saw the BritBox announcement, only 10 years too late. Uh, and I wish it well, it would be a great success. So let me say at the outset, I am an unalloyed optimist about the future of this great sector. And when we look back a generation from now, we should we should be able to reflect on this as a golden age of British media, telco, and tech. But I do say should, because there are momentous choices looming that will shape the course of this sector's future. There are many, but I'm gonna pick three. I'm gonna pick three that fall into three areas, trade, talent, and trust. Three T's that I think make 2019 an absolutely defining year for this industry, and perhaps the most important in a, gen in a generation. So let me just say a little on each and what good needs to look like. I'm afraid we can't escape Brexit. So if I start briefly with trade uh, and, um, and, and where we, we, we now are. So actually the CBI's message, and Julia said this, our message has remained unchanged and undimmed at the CBI from the day after the referendum. We speak for 190,000 businesses across the, across the UK, and the voice has been united and unanimous. The UK needs frictionless trade, access for our world-beating services, and a smooth transition. And no deal must come off the table. And as we speak here and now, it is very much on the table. We have been clear that hundreds of thousands of jobs are at stake. And our urgent message is that politicians have a duty, they have a real duty, to come together and either agree the current deal in the next 10 days, or if they can't, quickly, agree something else. Failure would be unforgivable and the consequences devastating. And we know that hugely in spades for, for this sector, the broadcasters being forced to move to the EU to continue to, plot, to supply services to European viewers. The severe threats to our cross-border data streams and the 240 billion pounds they bring to our economy.
And we will carry on bringing the evidence, the real stories from real companies. And if you can, please join us. Every time an MP hears from a local business, it helps to change minds, and it is not too late. The second T word I want to talk about is talent, people. The people who inspire your creativity, the power your businesses, create new startups, and invent your future. For a generation and more, the UK has been a magnet for the world's best creative talent. They come here because we have an ecosystem, something special, that fuels ideas and a creative spirit. And they come because they are welcomed among like-minded people. But we shouldn't take it for granted. Right now, the government is partway through a year-long consultation on our future immigration policy. There was a white paper before Christmas. It was the first time we have had a reset on immigration in this country in 40 years. And that is an opportunity. It's an opportunity, but it's also a great responsibility. And frankly, at the moment, what we're seeing has the potential for some serious harm. There's a proposal that anyone coming here must be earning 30,000 pounds or more. That's an idea that is completely unsuited to your sector, in which so many of your brightest and best are young, working in startups, getting experience, achieving incredible things, investing in their careers and moving on. And many whose pay package is partly inequity. That's a model that works, but it's completely ignored at the moment by the government's proposals. So, 2019 must be a year of evidence. We need to make the case for why getting this right is so important. So if you are affected, if your business is, risks being harmed, let government know. Or to make it easier, let us know, and we'll take your stories forward. But this is not just, we know this, it's not just about talent from abroad. It is so crucially about our own young talent, about our homegrown young people. And here there's a huge amount I could say, and I have said quite a lot in the recent weeks, about STEM, about how our education system needs to change. And one idea I mooted a fortnight ago, um, surprisingly to quite a lot of support, is that could we start by doing away with GCSEs to give the curriculum space to develop a broader set of skills, including those of creativity, digital, problem solving, lateral thinking, all the things that are so important to your industry. We're one of the only countries in the world that has two sets of serious public exams within two years. But I could say more about that. But what I want to do actually is to focus on one particular facet, and that's diversity. And Claire has already mentioned it. There is, of course, just one other event this week to rival this great conference, and that is International Women's Day tomorrow. And three things I would like to say on this. And the first is, it really is fantastic to look around the room and see so many women here. It can only be good for ideas, for, create, for creativity, for dynamism. And if there's one thing we know, it is this, that diverse companies are better companies across gender and so many of the other differences that define us as people. But second, I've just been looking at your agenda today and how many fantastic uh, female leaders you have speaking here, from Turpel, who's following me, Carolyn McCall, Jane Turton, Catherine Viner, um, Alex Mann, who, who has been nominated for Businesswoman of the Year. It is absolutely fantastic. And for every woman here leading a company, uh, standing up, being seen, speaking up, you inspire scores of other young women to believe, to really believe, that they can follow in your footsteps and set out on that journey. So all power to your collective elbows. But third, we also know there is so much more to do. In the leadership of media and creative industries, men still outnumber women two to one. Nine in 10 media companies pay men, on average, more than they pay women, and there's no quick fix. We mustn't forget the pay gap has many causes. To close it, the government needs to make progress on affordable childcare, technical education, careers advice. You'll hear us talking about that uh, incessantly. It really matters. But let's not, await, let's not wait around for others to do it for us. There's a huge amount we can do ourselves, and many CBI members already are. Vodafone's Reconnect program, the TV network's commitment to improve diversity on screen. And at the CBI on Monday, we're holding our first ever meeting of CBI Women in Technology. It's a group I do hope will amplify women's voices in the development of government policy and build a network of next generation women in tech. And if you'd like to join us, please just let me know. And finally, 
Yes, we need to talk about trust, that final T word I want to touch on this morning. Open a newspaper any time in the last six months, and you'll have seen the headlines. Everyone knows this is an industry undergoing a radical, once-in-a-generation transformation. It's an industry both disrupting and being disrupted. It's, of course, hugely exciting for consumers, for society, and for everyone who works in this industry. But amid the excitement and the promise that all that technology can bring, there is also a groundswell of mistrust. The honeymoon is over, the fears about snooping, the ease with which harm can be spread via social media, the worries about work, the security of employment in an increasingly automated world. And as one person put it to me rather vividly, it's the Terminator problem. People's fear of the unknown turning against them, the future intruding into today, harming their present. And I do think when we look back, we'll see this period as a toxic mix of fact, fiction, and fear. And I know that's painting a dramatic picture, but if we recognize the incredible disruptive power of modern, of modern digital media and telecoms, we must also acknowledge dis that disruption can be felt in ways both good and bad, and the calms can be very real. Now, part of the answer will simply be that long, hard road of separating fact from fiction, truth from misconception. And that might be the work of a generation or more, and I know it has already begun. Look at the Internet Matters campaign under which B BT, Google, Facebook, BBC, many more have invested millions to help make the Internet safer. Or the Internet Watch Foundation, which works with over 130 companies to remove harmful online content. Or Facebook's work in mental health. These initiatives are making a real difference. But I do think we need to ask, will industry action alone be enough to restore trust? And I think the answer to that question is no. And I think that means we can anticipate a future of greater oversight and greater regulation in some shape or form. And we can ignore that fact, we can resist it, or we can do something a little bolder. We can anticipate it, work with it, shape it. And I think we do have an opportunity to do that. Because in the coming weeks, the government will publish its internet safety strategy. There will be a serious conversation, and it can be a once in a generation opportunity. Get it right, and the UK can show the whole world how to get the balance right between freedom and oversight, checks and flexibility. And the CBI's approach, our approach, informed by our members, will be clear. It must be a real consultation in the truest sense, not fueled by a desire to take revenge on the shock of the new, not prejudged by either side, but everything must be on the table, evidence from all quarters. And let's accept that the pace of change has left regulation training and needs to catch up. That's a good thing. But badly designed regulation won't just undermine this industry. It simply won't work. So instead, regulation must be outcome-based, targeted, evidenced, proportionate, and effective in a fast-changing environment. And the test for me will be whether it delivers something the rest of the world wants to copy. Another example of where the UK can lead the world. And so, in conclusion, sum up, that is, of course, the point. This is all about building the best possible future, the best possible optimistic future. And right now, that future could hardly feel less certain. I suspect it may stay that way for a while. And there are threats, and let's not underestimate them. But there are also huge opportunities. And to return to the quote I started with, we can't predict, predict the future, but yes, I believe we can invent it. And now is the time to invent the right future for this country. And at the heart of it, there should be the thriving, fun, constantly changing, exciting world of telco, media, and tech. And with the right choices on the three Ts in particular of trade, trust, and talent, the UK can, and I believe will, lead the day. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of day inventing your own future. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.